Hey guys, this is an iPhone SE running on the upcoming iOS 11 and here's a quick overview of what to expect. Now I'm currently running on beta 6 so it's pretty stable and should give you a good idea of what to expect when iOS 11 is public. Now this is a beta and a lot of bugs that were previously here are now fixed but you'll still see some issues like the lock screen sometimes goes black and sometimes when you open the lock screen it kind of gives you an oversaturated image of your lock screen and then it goes back to normal after about 2 seconds. So that was the black screen and black screen once again and that was the oversaturated image of my lock screen. So after a few seconds it goes back to normal. But other than that the lock screen looks pretty similar to iOS 10. We do have a new animation where the lock screen goes up but in my opinion it looks pretty glitchy. Like I press the home button and the screen goes up and I get that but the entire transition isn't really smooth. And other than that, I'm not actually very impressed with iOS 11 in general. It does add some new features but I was hoping for a change in UI as well. I mean we had the same UI for quite some time now so it's nice to see a refresh and this is when you get bored of the same design and you go for jailbreaks to add custom skins and all. So rather than waiting for that, it's much appreciated to see a new UI from Apple directly. And that way even devices that can be jailbroken or people who don't want to jailbreak their phone or don't even know how to jailbreak their phone all can enjoy the new interface. But anyways, the major change in terms of design is the control panel. You'll see we have a completely redesigned control panel and it can do a lot more now in terms of functionality and not only that you can now somewhat customize the control panel by going into settings, control center and then custom controls. So we have the top row which is default but everything else can be customized. So if you go into settings you can add, subtract and even rearrange controls. And I'll go through every single one of them in a bit but that's gonna take some time so before I do that let's wrap up everything else in terms of features. So with iOS 10 we do have the ability to record our screen now which is great and Apple has blocked screen recorder apps and all of that until now. So it's nice to see Apple finally deciding to let people do what they want. And if you actually start recording and go into apps like Snapchat, it won't even know you're recording. You can view stories and all and it won't find out. So you won't get any screenshot notifications or anything like that. But it's definitely something that can change later down the road. And if you are on Snapchat, make sure you follow the royal tag. And other than that, Apple decided to rearrange things. So if you want to turn on and off auto brightness, you won't be able to find that in display and brightness. So instead you have to go into general, accessibility, display and auto brightness. So just some things Apple wanted to rearrange, I'm not sure why, they might end up putting them back into their original places before it's all public but we'll see. And going back into the settings, another added feature in the settings menu is the emergency SOS. So it's a similar feature to what we can find on Android so if you rapidly press your power button you kind of get this screen. And from there you can power off your phone, you can go into medical ID where if you save any data there that can be accessed by anyone. And if you slide the right one that will go to your local emergency center. But back to the phone, if you didn't notice some apps have also received a facelift. So the icon map that is new, the app store icon is also new, iTunes store and even the calendar app now uses a thicker font than what we saw on the iOS 10. So both look fine, it's just something they've changed. And even things like that are nice to see, it's a good refresh and I hope other apps also receive a new icon before everything is public. But moving on, going into messages, we see this app icon with the updated logo and from here you can access things like app store and send direct app links, digital touch and then kind of like gifs, music, bitmoji so you probably know this if you have snapchat so you can access all snapchat stickers here and send them directly in messages and not only that you can actually use them as actual stickers so just hold and let go and it'll stick to place but other than that going into notification center they've kind of combined notification center and the lock screen so all your notifications are now viewed on the lock screen so whenever you open the notification center it actually brings you to the lock screen and that's why you can see the timer and everything and then you can slide down and you'll see all of your notifications as you would on iOS 10. But for our control panel, here's our basic apps and this is the iPhone SE so it doesn't have 3D touch but if I press and hold somewhere for a few seconds it kind of acts like 3D touch and I kind of get that pop-in effect with the newer iPhones. So I'm not sure if this will be available for older iPhones like the iPhone 5S or iPhone 5 but it's definitely here for the iPhone SE. So other than that from the control panel we can now turn on and turn off personal hotspot so 
And our music player is now right over here. And everything can be accessed right from here. So our next icon is to lock the screen position so you can just move your phone around and your screen position will stay locked. And next we had this before, this is do not disturb. It's the same feature but it's redesigned and we also get that animation when turning it on and turning it off. And after that here's our brightness. So I can control the brightness right from here or I can press and hold and then it acts like 3D touch. And then I kind of get this bigger screen effect and from here I can also turn on night shift. And same thing goes for the volume control, you can kind of see that animation, it kind of moves in and out as you control it and if I press and hold, it kind of zooms in again and then you can see that animation. And after that we have the flashlight which is a simple press on and off button but with the phones with 3D touch you can actually 3D touch and change the intensity of the flashlight. So we can do that again here with the new iOS 11 update. And this is timer right here, so you can press here and it goes into timer, but if you... It kind of acts like a shortcut, so you don't have to go into the application, so I can go into 20 minutes, start a timer, and the timer is running, and then I kind of get that bad, so I know it's running. Well, let's go back into control panel. Our calculator has been redesigned, it's completely redesigned. It's a lot different than what the original calculator looks like. So just to compare things, this is the iOS 10 and this is the iOS 11. So you can see the calculator is completely redesigned. But in terms of functionality, it works the same. And I'm just gonna turn this as well. So no added features here, it's just a new design. So let's move on and after that, here's our camera application which I thought would receive a new UI but it didn't, it's still the same. The only added feature I saw is when you go into video mode, you can now see your recording in 4K or 1080p. So if you have the older iPhones or the iOS 10, you'll have to go into settings to figure out if you're recording in 1080p, 4K, or whatever resolution you're recording in. So that's a small added feature I saw, but other than that, the camera application is pretty much the same. Moving on, accessibility can be accessed from here and and you can toggle on and off your specific controls. So I have assistive touch here, so I can turn that on and off. So that is this thing right here. So moving on, alarm application which does not have any 3D touch and you can see a small animation when I try to press and hold so it kind of bounces back. So that tells me there's no 3D touch. So some neat animations but other than that, you can just jump into the alarms and the user interface is pretty much the same as iOS 10. Apple TV and after that we have an added feature which is do not disturb which so if you're driving you can use that and you won't get any calls or any notifications like that. Another added feature with the iOS 11 is the ability to record your screen right from your iOS without any jailbreaks or anything like that. So this is great and this is something that wasn't available until the iOS 11. And having this on, you can even go on Snapchat and you can view stories, you can do all of that and until now Snapchat doesn't recognize that and it won't give any notifications for screenshots or anything like that. So that's an added feature which is very convenient in some situations if you want to use screen recorders. And right next to it, this is a new function that I quite don't understand yet. So it's kind of a camera, it opens up the camera and I can change the brightness from here. I can change the saturation kind of and then it kind of adds these filters which acts like kind of like x-rays kind of thing but a, a colored version of that and again you can change the brightness you can change the intensity and you can switch all the colors around so I'm not exactly sure what this thing is for but maybe we'll find out in the future and after that, here's the battery icon, so now you can turn on low power mode right from your control panel, so you no longer have to go into settings to do that. After that, we can also change text right from our control panel, so you can change the size of your text. So I've just changed the size of my text and if I go back, I'll change into the max setting I could and you can see all the text right here and everything is a lot bigger now. But I'll go back, turn it into default, and this is voice control. And after that, this is our wallet. And this is our sub wallet. So that's all the features you can add into control panel and you can customize all these icons yourself. 
But overall, that was it for iOS 11. Let me know your thoughts about this and let me know if you want to see more videos like that. And as always, thanks for watching.